Hey Gadget Groupies, wanted to talk about cables for just a little bit. I know not the most exciting topic, but we're going through a bit of a transition for Android and Windows devices, moving from micro USB style cables to USB type C connectors. And I kind of wanted to take a look at what this transition, how this transition is happening versus where we've been on iOS devices for a little bit with the lightning connector. A while ago during one of my reviews, and I can't even remember which one, I expressed a little concern over type C. First of all, I was, I was actually concerned over the size of a Type-C connector. At that time, I was griping about USB Type-C. I was concerned about moving to a slightly larger, slightly thicker cable connector than what we were currently using with micro USB. Of course, USB Type-C brings all of those great benefits of having a reversible connector, but I really didn't have significant issues with micro USB. Just getting a feel for where these little pins were on the side, and then you can just remember. But I never had significant problems plugging micro USB into my phones, and oh no, it doesn't fit because I tried to jam it in the wrong way, that's what she said. And then I was also concerned over this cable design as the pins are actually inside the device. So when you connect USB Type-C to a device, if there's any flex on that housing, what kind of impact might we have on the internals for a phone, potentially damaging those internal pins? And having used the Lumia 950 for over a month now, I'm happy to say that this is a snug cable connector and I haven't had any issues with flex or with anything that I think might lead to potential damage through normal use, normal wear and tear. As for how USB Type-C cables are being built out right now, especially third-party solutions like this iOrange, I am still a little concerned over how shielding is being applied to these cable connectors. As we get into more case solutions for type C phones, we're going to have to have large cutouts to make sure that all cables can be plugged into their various devices. We had a pretty good handle on micro USB, especially in how that shielding was applied to the sides of the cable around the connector. Uh, and especially like we didn't have to have ginormous cutouts in our cases to provide clearance for most micro USB cables out on the market. So that is a concern there. Um, although I don't think it's going to be one that's going to drastically or radically affect the market when we start talking about future phones. As, as soon as we all start adopting USB Type-C for more devices, especially on our desktops and laptops, I think we're going to get used to this style connector very, very quickly. And for a lot of my concerns over durability and practicality, now having used USB Type-C, I have to say I like this solution better than what Apple did with the Lightning connector. First of all, can we just all admit that Apple makes terrible cables? The shielding is crap. They wear out super fast. They discolor like crazy. This right here is the cable I got with my iPhone 6S, and this is the cable that my wife has been using for a little less than a year with her iPhone 6. All it does is travel from her purse to her work desk and then back to her purse and then home. We're not talking about brutal use here, but this thing is crazy discolored. There are crimps and bubbles in the shielding all over this cable, and these pins are exposed so we can see that there's either gunk or makeup or something on the pins here. And whenever we have exposed pins, I know these cables do a really good job of power management, not shorting themselves out, not destroying your gadgets or creating fire hazards. But that still kind of makes me super nervous that damage could still even be applied to the lightning connector as these pins are exposed. This cable aged so quickly and so poorly that about three months ago, my wife had already replaced it with a third party solution just so that she would have something that felt a bit more rugged and a bit more durable. While Apple gave us a true blue reversible connector, they were the first ones to do it. We gotta give them props for that. I don't like Apple's solution as much as I'm looking forward to more devices having USB type C. So especially as we've seen Apple move over to type C for products like the new MacBook, I'm kind of hoping we'll see an iPhone at some point switch over to a cable that we all can use, a universal standard which actually is a standard because all players are really using it. Obviously that's not gonna happen with the iPhone 7, and that also means it's not gonna happen for the iPhone 7S, but fingers crossed in three years, maybe on an iPhone 8, we'll all get over ourselves and agree on one cable standard, USB Type-C to rule them all. And of course, I wanna hear from you folks. Have you guys started the migration to USB Type-C? Are you an iPhone user looking at replacing your lightning connector devices as you start looking at products like the new MacBook? Definitely drop me a comment down below this video. Those are the kinds of conversations I love getting into. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more rambling, editorial, vloggy videos like these. And I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there supporting it, either by shopping via all of the affiliate links below each of my videos,
or by buying my book. Take Better Photos, Smartphone Photography for Noobs is now available on Amazon to help you take your smartphone photo game up a notch. And of course, sharing my videos on your favorite social sites like Twitter and Reddit and Facebook and the Googles Plus is always greatly appreciated. So I can't thank you enough for bringing more cool people to the party. So hit that thumbs up button and I will catch you all on the next video.